Hey guys, what's up? So, I had one of those on second thought moments. You probably have had one of those. And, um, decided I'd change my primary oil. I'm glad I did. Kind of a quick peek inside the primary. Here's the primary chain. It's got about half an inch of play. I need to go check the specs, make sure we're good there. But uh, I'll do that. Um, I need to get this changed. The uh, oh, it looks like I got that's new. Looks like I got a seal starting to give me trouble. Hmm, that was not there before today's ride. I went on a about an hour long ride and um, crap. <laughs> it's funny how stuff starts showing up, you know? That, uh, that was definitely not there before today. So, anyhow, um, yeah, that looks pretty, pretty crummy. So we'll, uh, we'll get this changed and um, I'm hoping we're okay. Typically, transmissions will have some metallic particles in them. Um, so this pan is dirty, but I don't know if it'll focus. Probably not, knowing this phone. It does not necessarily feel gritty you know I'm not I'm not gonna send this off for analysis um, but I don't know I'm hoping everything's hunky-dory that seal bothers me like I said that that was not there before today and it's um, definitely wet so that kind of that kind of sucks there's the spacer for it right there so that means I'll definitely be taking that side case off to replace some seals I think I've got to replace that clutch cable anyway and my intent was to wait to change the transmission oil the primary sorry primary case oil um, when I did the clutch cable so I could do it all in one shot but <clears throat> you know I started having these thoughts like mm. now there was no indication in terms of rideability the bike shifts just fine there's no you know telltale signs that I've got a problem everything seems fine you know in riding it so you know like I said it wasn't anything that it was a dead giveaway that I have a problem it's just that gut feeling you get you know so here we are, and uh, then we're gonna get this done. So in reading everything um, on the Buell XB forum, typically uh, they're using you know 2050 weight oil, uh, you know as long as it's safe for transmissions. I'm a big Lucas oil fan, so love them or hate them. Some people hate them. That's fine. Um, I've had really good success with it. I've used lots of different oils uh, throughout my life. Um, used to be a huge Castrol fan, Castrol Syntec, you know, the, the motorcycle oils, the car oils, etc. Royal Purple, big fan of Royal Purple. Still, I'm a big fan of Royal Purple. But the KZ650 that I was using, um, I used to burn oil in that thing pretty bad. I mean, it was half a quart in, in a single trip. You know, it's, it's really, really rough. And um, so I thought, well, what the heck? I'll give Lucas a shot because I've heard guys have a lot of success in air-cooled engines with Lucas. And I quit burning oil with that stuff. So I became a convert. The previous owner used also used Lucas in it. So, you know, why why stop doing a, um, a good thing in my opinion? So I'm going to keep that going. Anyhow, so uh, I'm going to pause this and get the oil plugged back into the primary case and uh, drop some oil in. 
it just takes one quart. That's what the, the book says and that's what the videos all say regarding how much to put in. And um, there is a Harley Davidson specific part number for the oil that Buell wants you to use. Um, but, you know, I'm fairly certain that oil is made by somebody like Haviland or somebody like that, you know, you know Shell, who knows. Because that Shell Rotella is acceptable in the uh, Harley manuals. So, anyhow, I'm um, going to get this uh, buttoned up. All right, guys, we'll we're back. back. Um, <clears throat> so, we are still working on the uh, primary. Um, I'm checking chain tension. And um, the maximum allowable is a half of an inch. Uh, well, that's according to the uh, guide, the uh, owner's manual, or sorry, shop manual. And um, we are like right there. So one of the things it says to do is to rotate the engine around and continue to check for that amount of play. And then there's an adjustment nut down here on the bottom that uh, will adjust to increase the tension against the primary. And the minimum uh, movement is uh, three eighths of an inch. So it's it's a pretty tight um, variance, right? In terms of, you know, well, I don't have a calibrated tool other than my finger to check exactly how much that's moving. But, you know, being an American, that's about a half an inch. Um, so, all right, I was able to uh, we're gonna get the bike into fourth gear and rotate the engine around a couple times. I had to actually pull the bike back. You probably noticed that the bike suddenly changed positions, but I was able to slide it back on the stand and uh, put it in the fourth gear and and give myself a little bit more leverage against that compression and the engine to uh, check this. So I'm gonna have to keep pausing the, vi the uh, camera a lot because um, I'm running out of power. So uh, we'll just uh, pause again. I'm gonna make a very slight adjustment down here and then uh, we'll come back guys. So I apologize for not capturing it on video, but <clears throat> um, so the nut on the bottom, you just loosen that up, uh, the one that I was showing you. Um, matter of fact, just to help you guys out, I'm gonna get oil all over my camera, my phone. But just for you guys, um, that is the uh, adjuster that I'm talking about. So you just loosen up the large nut there, and then that Allen, hopefully it'll focus for you. Probably not. But that Allen is what you would use to uh, make the adjustment. And we are now looking at, let me get my hand in there, right at, I mean, we're so close to three eighths of an inch. We're, we're definitely tighter than we were. And I don't wanna go any tighter. Um, if you get it too tight, it can cause issues. And so this is something I can, I can you know, just do at any point. So I'm gonna stop where I'm at and button things up and then, uh, you know, one of the things that's nice about Lucas <laughs> is it's got a little bit of that mechanic in a can going for it. It's got some uh, uh, oil stabilizers, and this is the synthetic I'm using, full synthetic, but uh, Buell, Buell, um, Lucas comes with oil stabilizers that uh, help O-rings to seal a little bit better and there oftentimes when you have slight leaks like this that uh, Lucas can help seal up and uh, not stop but mitigate you know and it just buys you a little time so I don't you know I can continue to enjoy riding my bike without having oil draped all over the side of my primary case so this will have to come off and this will have to be uh, addressed this o-ring and that uh, clutch cable the clutch cable has got to get replaced regardless I don't see Lucas helping that one bit but this this is a pretty good chance that 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 will definitely slow down quite a bit or stop um, if it doesn't you know then we fix it but 
anyhow, so I'm going to button this up, you guys. I uh, appreciate the, the time and patience you're taking to, to watch this video. I know it's kind of all over the place with me stopping, starting, stopping, starting. You know, but uh, I'm learning about this bike um, while I'm videoing or recording all of this. So, all right, guys, so uh, stay tuned. Make sure that you subscribe. And uh, if you don't mind, throw me a like. If you don't like it, whatevs. But if you know more about this particular situation than I do, and you likely do, if you, especially if you don't, if, you, if you've owned a Harley or a Buell for a while, let me know some tips or tricks that you know of to make sure that I'm uh, not missing something. I'm pretty sure I got it, but you know, there's always something. Thanks you guys. I'll uh, catch you later. Peace out.